Okay, everybody wanted to see an update on my fix to my Glock slide right here, where I fixed this, where this didn't have a gap anymore. Uh, after I put some rounds through it, they wanted to see if it still stayed with a gap. Well, I've put about 100 rounds through this, and the gap is still there. Still has that nice little gap between the frame like it should, kind of even all the way down through. It did look like it closed up just a fraction, but nothing like it did the first time. You got to remember I put 100 rounds through this and it moved hardly at all, if any. Uh, the first time I did it, it only took 50 rounds for it to be completely turned up and scraping the bottom of the frame. So it looks like it's going to hold. Doesn't look like it has disformed uh, or uh, changed its shape any from firing. So it looks like that was a success. Now. In some conversations on some forums, there have been some talk about whether this will damage the frame to heat this up and push this back down. Well, I actually spoke to a chemical engineer for DuPont, and apparently DuPont makes the material the slides are made out of, or the frames are made out of, sorry. And she said that, you know, as long as you are not heating it above three or 400 degrees, you're not damaging it at all. Uh, she said these plastics are called what they call a... Uh, thermoset plastic, I forget exactly what she said, but she said they are made to where they can be formed and reformed without losing strength or hardness as long as you don't take them to a certain prop point where, I forget what she called it, but it's basically to where it actually starts to melt. Now she said the process where you, where some people do it with dopping and then boiling in water is actually worse than using the dry heat from the gun. She said that is a different type of process. It can actually damage the plastic a little more and plus it gets hotter and it transfers heat differently than the forced convection heat from the gun. So uh, that's getting into a little bit of science stuff that I don't really see a need to get into here. Uh, but uh, the whole, the, her point was, no, it shouldn't damage it. Just if you did this like every great once in a while to re-straighten your frame out, shouldn't damage it at all, especially uh, if you're just being very careful and just heating it just enough. Now, I remember when I heated it the other day, people asked me how long I did. I only did that for like five seconds, and I had the gun on low and kept a good distance between the gun and the uh, frame. I never wanted to get real close. So just be careful. Take your time if you want to do it. Don't use the boiling water method. That Apparently that is a little more dangerous and more risky of damaging your polymer. But if you're just using a dry heat and you're not heating it to a melting point, she said you're actually not generating any more heat than firing the gun generates. So you shouldn't be damaging. She said if, she said if it's damaged by the heat of a heat gun on low, then it'll be damaged by firing it. And I really doubt Doc uses such a poor material that that would be true. So controversy aside, remember that this is not something that affects function. If you're someone who doesn't care about aesthetics and you only care about function, then don't even worry about this at all. But if you're someone like me that's OCD about appearance and function, well then you might want to do it. Be up to you. Might not be worth it. You might consider a Glock a throwaway and you may not care about what Glocks look like. A lot of people don't buy Glocks in their looks. I personally find Glocks pleasing in a certain kind of way, in, in a minimalist way. So I wanted it to look the best it could look. So I did it. Don't have any worries about why about the fact that I did it. Don't think I've damaged a gun at all, and I seem to be being backed up by that. And it seems to have held its shape after firing the second time. So it looks like maybe that just its initial heating and cooling causes that warping. Maybe it doesn't do it after the first time. And you know some of the Glocks come that way from the factory, from just the cooling process of being uh, made, and they come warped already. Now I made sure to buy a gun that wasn't warped already, so it warped from the firing and it did it in the first 50 rounds. So now, long and short of it, got a hundred, fixed it, doesn't seem to have damaged it, told that it won't damage it, put a hundred more rounds through it, didn't go back to the way it was, so I am overall happy with what has happened.